You are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. Let's discover hard couple months, but it's in this this enough so you can know what's up in the hood. I've been making jewelry since freshman year, so about three years. I started making it because I wanted to make original pieces that reflected um, my style and who I am. And I can't really find those at the store, so I wanted to kind of put my own personality into my jewelry. I get inspiration from all over, like Instagram or even what my friends are wearing. Um, or I guess just like my own personal style. It doesn't take too long because I don't really do super intricate stuff, but if I'm beading things, it usually takes a little bit longer, so like 30 minutes, but um, if I'm just making like a pair of earrings, it'll really only take like 10 minutes. I made these. <laughs> um, I make a lot of necklaces, like with little pendants and um, beads along like the string, um, and they're usually like stretchy, and I like to have a lot of colors, um, making them all cute and fun. Hello, my name is Jesus, and my favorite sport to play is soccer. I've been playing soccer since I was eight. I started getting into soccer when many people at my school kept wanting me to play with them. They always said that they needed more players, and they think that I would be a good, I don't know, like a sort of player for them. I played, my first games were at this own place at Simons Park, where we entered this little league and just played soccer for fun. Nowadays, um, me and some friends made a soccer group and we joined the league. And every Saturdays, we play soccer at my school at Marine Leadership Academy or MLA. Soccer has helped me in many ways because every time I feel, you know, not in the state of mind, I would just refer to soccer. I would, it would help me clear my mind. The thing that I like about soccer is the, um, the adrenaline, the feeling it gives you. It gives you that, um, like that pumping feeling that feeling to improve, the feeling to get better, the feeling to score goals. That's what I like about it. Hey, my name is Lanaya. My favorite show is Star because it has a lot of drama and um, like teen stuff. Um, my grandma, she started watching it and then I seen a bunch of girls, teenage girls fighting and then I was like, oh, that's interesting. And I started watching it and it's just been good ever since then. I will describe it um, crazy, but then it's like, it goes back to the fame and all types like issues that teenagers have with a bunch of like miscarriage and you know, uh, boy drama and other things. I'm quite sure a lot of people watch Star because it's a great TV show, it's popular.
My name is W. Dale Bush. I've been the co-owner of Challengers Comics for a little over 11 years now. We opened on March 31st, 2008. I opened the store with my business partner, Patrick Brower. Uh, we'd both worked in comics retail for a few decades by that point, um, both working together and for a chain of stores. Uh, comics retail has changed a lot over the years. We've, uh, as a business, shifted from more of a, a collectibles format where individual comics would come out once a month and then they'd be gone forever so people would be paying higher prices to find issues to finish stories and then in the last uh, about 20 years it's been more of a focus on book formats graphic novels where people are able to very easily years later pick up stories all at once for a decent price um, in the last few years it's shifted a little bit in terms of moving back towards the collectible format uh, there's a lot of people who are very excited about maybe getting first appearances of characters, early stories, largely stuff where they see that there might be more demand down the line. So it's almost like speculating like a stock market situation. Um, I, I don't know that our customer base has changed a lot over the years, um, mostly just as, as a maturing business. Um, as years go by, more people find the store more people hang around. Um, at the same time, people move away and people get other jobs. Um, mostly, I think what we've seen is, is just a growth of kind of families in the area. And we're seeing a slightly younger audience now in that we're seeing people that are maybe in their kind of early 20s, just moving to the city. Having a, uh, a retail brick and mortar establishment in 2019 is uh, it's an uphill battle for sure. Um, so we're, we're trying. We're hopefully uh, going to be sticking around for 11 more years. Hopefully comics impact this community in a positive way. Um, like any art form, hopefully it'll give people a chance to maybe escape from their day-to-day -day lives, maybe find something that they want to pursue as an art form. Hopefully. I don't know that I have one like kind of formative comics memory. I guess the one that comes up the most is maybe like the first Spider-Man comic I ever bought. Uh, I, the stuff that people respond to the most, um, there's kind of two camps. Um, one, there's always gonna be superhero fans, and those superhero fans are mostly gonna wanna pick up Batman comics. That's how much interest there always is in Batman as a character. Um, so that stuff is definitely gonna be a huge part. Uh, my personal connection to comics is that, uh, like a lot of comics fans, I found them at an early age. Uh, really got excited about the characters, the storytelling, and sought out a store where I could find as many comics as there were available at the time. And that really started my love affair with comics retail, of, of being able to sort of be at the hub of comics. Uh, I think the thing that uh, I enjoy the most about comics retail is I don't have any like artistic ability. I'm not a writer, I'm not an artist, I can't make a comic book. But one of the few things I can do is I can help people find a good comic for them. I can help them find something that, that they're going to respond to and hopefully it's going to spark an enjoyment for the medium in them. Uh, that's the small way that I can be a part of a medium that I really enjoy. On June 15th of 2019, electric scooters appeared around the streets of Chicago. These scooters were from several companies including Bird, Lime, and Spin. Citizens have now been using them for recreational purposes as well as public transportation. Instead of putting our own opinions into a video, the CTVN ASM program went to the streets of Logan Square to ask Chicagoans about their thoughts on these scooters. I think it's nice that we have them now in Chicago because I discovered them in California. A lot of cities in California don't have as robust of a public transit system like Chicago and have more uh, months of the year when the weather is nice. So my, my initial reaction was this might be a solution that's looking for a problem and not something that we necessarily need. Well, I'm wondering when they issue these things out, why they're not allowing people to also rent helmets and pads for their elbows and knees. I actually kind of like the idea. I think it's going to be fun if it's used in the right way. I mean, 
these things are seriously dangerous and I see the hazard in it. I mean, you're looking at concussions, you're looking at passively head trauma, spinal injury. Um, I think the electric scooters are a pretty good addition to Chicago um, since they're pretty affordable. Would you rather ride the dimmy bikes or the scooters? I like the electric scooters better because they seem more fun to ride with, they're fast, they're cool, they're easy to access. So I like the scooter and it is actually very easy to ride. I've ridden them in other cities and they're very easy to ride and get used to. The Dibby bikes make sense to me because there's, uh, I like that there's a, uh, not a paddock, but a, a station, right, where you have to leave it uh, versus the scooters get left all over the place. So I wonder about how that clutters the city or just makes things look kind of trashy. Um, I mean, this day and age, a lot of people have smartphones, um, so I think it's just bad luck if you don't have a phone. It could be unfair because not everyone has a smartphone. Even though a lot of people might have a smartphone, for the people who really do want to get on the scooter but can't, it seems unfair to them. But I guess um, since not everyone is able to acquire a phone, um, it does kind of suck having the scooters be only accessible with phones. I like that you can get them anywhere, like you can find them mostly like anywhere off the street. Um, I like how convenient they are. Um, I mean, it's summer, so obviously walking a little bit for a scooter is not gonna kill you. It's really fun. And um, I mean, it, it's a better way to take transportation instead of just taking the bus where I don't know, it could just be really packed sometimes and not as quick as a scooter. These have been the opinions of the citizens of Chicago. As you can see, some citizens are concerned about logistics and safety, but overall Chicago is excited about the new electric scooters. Thank you for watching.
Julian, are you okay? Julian, are you okay? Julian, are you okay? America has always dealt with the problem of illegal immigrants. This problem was usually met with deportation by government organizations like INS, the Immigration and Naturalization Services. But since 2003, a new government law enforcement agency has been active, ICE, short for Immigration and Customs Enforcement, is a U.S. government agency meant to deal with immigration policies as well as deporting illegal immigrants. In the last few years, they have faced many controversies, especially under the new policies President Donald Trump has implemented. They are a government organization that takes undocumented immigrants away from their families and, I guess, deports them, if you want to use that term. Like, the job is to, you know, to kick out undocumented immigrants. Obviously, we have people here that are trying to flee from another place to live a beneficial life and a better life here in America rather than their original home. The idea of families being split up and you don't really know like where that person goes or what happens, I think they're actually really scary. I actually think that, like with the raids going on I guess presently, everything was going around and it was just like really putting fear into a lot of families in the United States. ICE has faced many controversies under President Donald Trump one of which is the immigrant detention centers. ICE holds immigrants in 15 of these detention centers, ranging from state jails to shelters. Many images have come out from these centers showing immigrants in cramped cages. Along with these cages, there has also been many stories of families being separated in these centers. Several news outlets, politicians, and protest groups have said that these centers should have been open for as long as they have been. I know that conditions have gotten worse. I've seen some video and it looks like a lot of um, immigrants have been taken to the detention centers and they're all very crowded in there. Based on it looks like it's like a few rooms and it's like little space for them. So it doesn't seem like it's great condition at all. People out there, some people say it's really bad. Some people say it's not as bad as some news outlets make it, so. I think they are being treated unfair because based on what's going on right now in, in our society. I just don't think that it's right to just take them because they're not like from here and they shouldn't be here because we all deserve the chance to be here. They're basically given just the minimum amount of, of comfort, um, you know, with no real regard to their basic humanity outside of just making sure that they survive. I think it's not right. Like, they should just all be together. And like I said before, just they shouldn't even be at that detention center in the first place. A part of me is kind of on the fence because they bring in the whole law, like, you know, I guess the parents are breaking the law. So if you were to do that on American soil, your kids would be taken away while you're in detention the same way or given to a family member. Um, whereas in their case, their family members are probably across the border. So it's tough to call, but I think in this situation, they should not separate families because of that issue. ICE has done multiple raids, starting in 2006 with the SWIFT raids. In recent years, however, these raids have had more attention drawn to them, causing controversy. For many years, the raids were primarily focused on workspaces. However, 
that has slowly changed to homes in recent years. The most recent raids as of writing, the July 2019 raids, have been reported to have had arrest quotas for agents, which can include non-illegal and non-offending immigrants. Obviously, the raids are uh, the cruelest to the people who are you know, not citizens, who are, who are perhaps here without documentation, but they are also wrong for the citizens of the United States. If you look at the population, and you look at um, how many people per square mile in Mexico there is versus like how many people per square mile in France. Of course, there's going to be a shorter wait list of someone from France who wants to apply to become a citizen versus Mexico. If you go out and ask a business owner and ask them, how's business doing? Historically, immigrants have always been the ones that are wanting to do the jobs that no one else wants to do, like dishwasher or working in, on a farm or things like that. A person should be arrested only when they've done something wrong. Everybody's rights are violated when anybody's rights are violated. People have many differing opinions on ICE, though it seems most people think of them negatively. Even after this film, we encourage you to research for yourself and come to your own conclusion on ICE.